If you want to fly with precision like this, it helps to have an analog joystick and throttle. But Windows doesn't always cooperate. Windows can make joystick setup frustrating and feel like it's just not worth it. But stick with me and I'll have you set up in minutes. So one of the first things we need to talk about is where you plug your joystick and your throttle in. Now there's typically USB ports on both the front and the back of the computer, but those are typically two separate USB controllers. This is important because if you try to combine that joystick later in a profile, you will have issues if they're plugged into different controllers. So I recommend plugging the joystick and the throttle into either both the front or both the back of your computer. Now you can also plug them into a USB hub. I do recommend that the USB hub is self powered. I will have a link in the description below for a few recommendations and this is a link that will support this channel but will not cost you anything. We need to double check that everything is working with your joystick in Windows. So we're going to come down here to the window. And we're going to type in USB. What should come up is set up USB game controllers. We're going to click on this and hopefully find the joystick that you have plugged in. Now I do hope that by this point you have not only plugged in your joystick, but you have also set it up with whatever drivers or software is needed to run it. If you've done that, it should show up in Windows here. For me, I'm going to go ahead and click on my joystick HOTAS Warthog. And what you want to make sure is that all of the buttons work. Now I had an issue where my button number four was stuck down. This is a modifier that I use and it was causing me some issues. So one of the reasons you want to check this is to make sure that the buttons are working. You have nothing that's stuck. So I would just go through and push all of the different buttons you can find on your joystick and just make sure that you don't have any issue that could show up inside the game. Now, you also want to check your axes. You want to move it in full deflection in all directions. You can hear mine when I go all the way up because it has an audible tone when I reach a certain level. You can go into settings and hit calibrate, but I would suggest checking your software to see if there is a calibration software that came from the OEM. Once you've checked one of your peripherals, you might as well go and check the next one. For me, that's gonna be my throttle. And I'm gonna check all the buttons and axes. Now this one does have some buttons that actually stay in position. So it's normal to see some of them locked on or off. Some software like Target will allow you to take both your throttle and stick and combine them into one virtual controller. Windows sometimes has an issue with the way the power is drawn when you do this. So when I go ahead and run a configuration, you will see that up here, this changes from having a joystick and a throttle to a Thrustmaster virtual game controller. When you combine both joysticks with a profile such as in Target, sometimes the Windows power management system will reveal a problem. On occasion, one of the joysticks won't work or it may not combine at all. In order to fix this, we're gonna have to go ahead and change some of the settings within the power management. The first thing we're gonna do is go down to the Windows tab and left click it. Then we're gonna type in CON and hopefully the control panel shows up. Go ahead and hit return and you should see the control panel launch. Once that happens, click on hardware and sound. Click on power options and you'll see that I am showing in high performance. Now I had to create this, so you may have to create a power plan. Once you're in create a power plan, you can make a name and you can choose high performance. High performance did not show up for me as a default. So again, if you need to, if you don't see high performance when you come into the control panel, click on power plan and then you should see high performance and you can give it a custom name, hit next and you can save it. Now that you have a high performance plan, you'll need to go ahead and click on change plan settings. And in change plan settings, you're gonna to need to go ahead and click on change advanced power settings. Within here, you wanna click on USB settings, and then you wanna expand USB selective suspend setting. This is a setting that Windows has that will allow a USB device to be put into low power mode when not used. Again, for a tablet or for a laptop that's on a battery power, this can be useful, but for gaming, it is not. So you wanna go ahead and disable this and hit apply. Now, I have used this with both disabled and enabled, and I haven't had any issues, but because of what it does, you may want to go ahead and disable it. Now that your power plan is set 
and you've turned off the USB suspend, there is a deeper level we can get into. If neither of the things I've talked about before have helped you, there is a deeper level that I've had to use on occasion. We're gonna have to go into the enhanced power management and we're gonna have to go into the registry editor to do this. I had a problem when I combined my joystick and throttle together that one of the two of them would stop working. After a lot of frustration and searching the web, I found the forums frontier and I found this forum post by the hundredth monkey. The first thing we need to do is click on this USB DIY viewer and you're going to go to this page here and you'll need to scroll down to the bottom. Now, if you're listening to this in English and you want it in a different language, you can check down here, but English is not actually down there. So it was a little confusing for me at first, but go ahead and download this here for what's appropriate for you. I have a 64 gigabyte system, so I'm gonna download the 64 gigabyte version. Once you get to your downloads folder, go ahead and right click on it, hit expand all and extract. It'll put those into your downloads folder as a non zip file. You can put this somewhere else, but for now we're just gonna leave it here. And when you click click the DIY viewer, you're going to want to right click it and run it as an administrator. Otherwise it won't let you edit. Now, once you're in here, you're going to see a lot of options. And what you're going to look for is your joystick and throttle name, or at least one of them. It may help to expand the device name tab so you can see all of the names. Here I have my joystick Hotos Warthog. You're going to right click it and then go down to open and reg edit. Once you're in reg edit, you're going to see that you can expand this file and you want to go to device parameters. Once you click on device parameters, you're going to want to go over to the right and right click on enable power management. Click on modify. Mine shows a zero, but it used to show a one. You're going to want to make it a zero and hit OK. You will then want to restart your computer. Now you can also find the links for these in the description below in case you want to see the actual written instructions. Let me know in the comments if these tips helped you. And subscribe for more peripheral and gaming tips and tricks.